A very good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of the Department of Physics and the Physics Alumni Society, I invite the gathering for the 11th Professor K.M. Karnakaran Endowment Lecture. We are extremely happy to host this function because today is our National Science Day. As we start our most awaited event of the academic year, I request our respected audience to kindly keep your phone in silent or in switched off mode to avoid interruptions. Thank you. It is a mark of our undying tradition to invoke the Almighty at the beginning of an important event. The function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of the one who prays. Let us begin with a prayer song by our department choir, followed by the prayer by Professor Janet Priscilla. I request the gathering kindly rise. Let us all bow down our heads and pray. Almighty God, we come to thy presence in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We glorify and thank thee for all the blessings you have showered on us. We ask you to bestow your grace and blessings on all of us as we start this 11th Professor K. K. M. Karanakaran Endowment Lecture. We humbly ask you to shower your blessings onto our speaker and all those who have gathered here. We pray that you deepen our comprehension, broaden our thinking, and transform our understanding of what we are about to hear and learn today. May we also observe the invaluable knowledge and put it into practice that all are and a perfect teacher. Bless our college and schools. May love, unity, and brotherhood be learned here. May there be sent forth continually a stream of men and women who shall serve faithfully in thy world. Amen. Please be seated. May I request the dignitaries to kindly occupy the dais. May I now invite Dr. P. Subhashni, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, and the Staff Advisor of Physics Society to welcome the gatherings. Professor K. M. Karunakaran Endowment Lecture has always congregated elite veteran academician with the alumni, faculty, and students to instill advanced arena of research. Today, 28th February, 2023, yet another episode. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the members of the physics department and the alumni, I extend a cordial welcome to Dr. V. Subramanian, FASC and FNASC Outstanding Scientist from CSIR, CLRA, Chennai, who is known for his erudition and teaching skills. He is here today to uh, set the stimuli to ignite the young minds and faculty on Dirac materials. Welcome, sir. From the bottom of our hearts, we welcome Dr. N. Lakshmi Narayan, former professor and president of the Physics Alumni Society, and the mighty alumni who have come here to witness the 11th Professor KMK lecture. The seed and root of this event are our alumni, alumni society, and their generous contribution. Welcome, sir. 
With forever adoration and appreciation to my department members, I extend a delightful welcome to the head of the department, Dr. P. Samuel Asirvadam, my dear colleagues and students. I welcome each and every one of you. I thank HOD sir for this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am, for your warm greetings. May I now request Dr. P. Samuel Asivadam, the head of the Department of Physics, to welcome our distinguished speaker of the day, Dr. V. Subramanian, and our beloved President of Physics Alumni Society, Dr. N. Lakshmi Narayanan, with potted plants as a token of our love. May I kindly request our Head of the Department of Physics, Dr. P. Samuel Asirvadam, to present the memento to, to, the, to our Chief Guest, Dr. V. Subramanian. Great teachers empathize with students, respect them, and believe that each one has something special that can be built upon. This is absolutely true with N, Dr. N. Lakshmi Narayan. His contributions to college and departments are tremendous, and it, is, it, it continues. We are elated to invite our former associate professor and the president of Physics Alumni Society, Dr. N. Lakshmi Narayan, to deliver the presidential address. Ah, that'll be simpler. Is it? Hello? Yes. Very good morning to all of you. Forget about all these things. I am just Lakshminarayan. I did my MSc Physics 75-77. None of you were born. Maybe some of your parents also would not have been born. Some of you. I don't know. <laughs> we... So... My association with this campus is so long. It's a delight to come back here always. And uh, it is also, in a sort of way, very comfortable that the principal is not here, so that I can speak more about the physics department to all our physics students here. <laughs> uh, I start off with, I'll come back to Dr. Subramanya <laughs> later. He's our chief guest and a speaker one of the very notable Chennai physicists. He looks very simple, always humble, but a brilliant man. Can I have the next slide, please? How many of you know, does anyone of you, do any one of you know any one of these people here? Yes? Okay, then. Anybody else? Yes? Ah, fine, that's good. <laughs> He's there in the staff room. Then? Yes? Ah, so <laughs> that's, that's good. Then? Raja Ramani. 
నేను నా వీ షుడెంట్ స్పీక్ ద స్టూడెంట్స్ ఎస్ ఇట్స్ అ వెరీ సాడ్ థింగ్ all all of them excepting professor moffett and nehru were our super seniors from the physics department mcc all of them are from this department in which you are studying now and they are the leaders of science in india you will listen to kamala asni when he tells you that this was the only college those days this was the one, one of the few one or two three colleges in the nation and uh, you can see nehru holding the hand of some person here do you know who that remarkable person is very sad yes who said that good that's ks krishnan he is our super senior from the physics department it was called physical sciences at that time professor moffett identified him he was a demonstrator in the chemistry department initially then he got him a post as the director of the kodaikanal observatory this is the british times then from there he went for his phd to calcutta raman and more importantly the experiment which earned raman the nobel prize was done by him designed and executed by him uh, there are a lot of stories there <laughs> but uh, i feel as a physics student from mcc he should have also shared the nobel prize with raman and th- that's a big story that let's forget that so that is krishnan and uh, krishnan was a very notable scientist very uh, very deep scholar and very highly respected by nehru so nehru took krishnan for building up indian science please understand that he is from mcc your senior so nehru took him look at the way he is holding his hands nehru is totally dependent on him npl was instituted by ks krishnan the atomic power uh, atomic energy commission was set up and groomed by ks krishnan and baba and baba's protege was ramana dr raja ramana it is very sad that you don't know raja ramana himself <laughs> raja ramana is one of the doyens of indian nuclear energy such a big man and at that time raja ramana felt that uh, the universities did not train students well enough to be employed in the nuclear energy institutions therefore they started the baba in a training uh, <laughs> uh, yes uh, <laughs> yes our kids our uh, they should know the history of the department which they belong to professor matthews was from the theoretical physics department uh, university of madras and uh, i think he has written one of the best or maybe the best f- physics textbook on quantum mechanics the textbook for quantum mechanics by matthews and venkatesan i think is one of the best textbooks on quantum mechanics in india definitely this is professor matthews he himself has dabbled in various fields he is now retired i had included another photo here m lakshmanan professor m lakshmanan of non linear dynamics who was his student i don't know how many of you have heard of professor m lakshmanan he is from palachi he did his uh, in this professor ecg was here for uh, one or two years after his uh, studies as a demonstrator uh, professor matthews i don't think so lakshman and professor lakshman whose photos doesn't t- seem to be on this document was on the faculty for some time before he was recommended by kem karnakaran to matthews to take him as phd student then he did his phd under matthews and then progress and now he is a leading specialist on non linear dynamics in the world he is india science chair professor if you should google these things and find out the status of such posts and all these people always have a fondness for the physics department and for this campus this campus as you know has given so many leaders in this nation can i just go to the next slide 
Yes. This is 2009. You can see many of your professors here are as young people. Dr. Philemon Raj is here, who has just come here, our previous head of the department. <laughs> Vistas in Physics Research was conducted in 2009. It was a regional seminar, UGC sponsored, and also sponsored partially by the college, I think. We conducted this seminar, and all the people here, uh, in the first row standing, uh, some of them are your faculty members, some of them are, this is Dr. Rita from, at that moment, Teresa University, Women's University. She's, another, she's now in the Theoretical Physics Department. Head of the Department of Theoretical Physics, Dr. Rita, she's from our college. And there are other people you know, all young people, look, they look very young. <laughs> your faculty, your professors who are now looking, who are looking very young. Professor Prabhakar is there. Uh, I more particularly want to focus on these four people. Aruna, my classmate, who as I always know him personally. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is 14 years ago. <laughs> so one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lakshmi, such a rich department, and this has not stopped. We have a lot of our students now abroad doing the research in physics. And you will realize that whenever you go to any institution, I think most of India, and you say you are from MCC physics, they look at you. Because they know from your alumni, you come from a department steeped in physics culture. So they expect that you must be good. That is what, <laughs> that is what has been given to you by your, all your alumni. The speaker uh, for this lecture because uh, projects of which uh, DST Young Scientist Scheme in the year 1996 and some Indo-French projects, that's the DST DAD project, and quite a lot of uh, projects, as I've mentioned, 20 or more projects Sarah's got, through which several students have been benefited to work under him and got their PhD through that. I'm skipping the details of the projects. Uh, yes, more than 200 publications. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's a very emotional moment for me. Sam said I moved to chemistry. Quantum mechanics, uh, Matthew Spengdyson's book. But it is the entire problems in Matthew Spengdyson was solved by Professor KMK. A huge book, this much book, uh, used to be with the Professor Karnagaran. And most of the time he uses the projector, right? But he will write all the equations, all the uh, equations without any difficulty he will derive in the class, right? But the slides are made by maximum slides. 90% of the slides are written by Professor Chandran. I don't know how many of you are know Professor PC, all right? Chandran always writes slides. Part of the slides are written by Professor RBK. I'm sure you all know about uh, uh, Professor Balakrishnan. Professor Balakrishnan used to write some of the slides. Most of the time, the slides are written by Chandran. And uh, he will put the slides, but he will go to the board and derive all the equations. Today, I am really difficult for me to solve all those. If it was a linear harmonic oscillator, I may skip certain steps. What do you want to refer to? That book, you will get all this detail. I will go to the final result. All right? But that won't happen with the Professor KMK. He will derive all the complete slides he will derive. And uh, 
one thing, you know, as he was telling, at that time, not many, many, many colleges had MS physics. Only few departments, one, only few colleges, I think it is Presidency College and MCC, only two had MSc. Later on only, Layla got uh, MS physics and then Vivekananda. Even though Vivekananda has some established uh, track record, they had physics much, much later. And uh, the physics tradition in MCC is very well known, that's because of that. I do uh, have one thing, this is not boasting, uh, to connect with this particular college. Recently, I got Raja Ramana Fellowship. Due to, this is a, due to personal reason, I have not taken that fellowship. Due to personal reason, I have not taken that fellowship. I wanted to be away from CLRI, uh, but it is to be instituted in CLRI. Therefore, I don't want to go back to the place where I worked for a, such a long time. Some of them known to me are joining the same department. Therefore, sometimes I need to do some backseat driving, which I don't want to do. Therefore, I chose to not to accept that particular uh, fellowship, which is a very, very prestigious fellowship in the country. Those who are um, uh, in, the, in the early stage of your career, you can Google it and see what is meant by Raja Ramana Fellowship. Okay. With this, I stop and go back to my uh, lecture. But this topic is very much closely related to the condensed matter physics. Actually, this is the topic of research today, this particular topic. Many people are working in our country, many people are working, but few, few groups are working on the theoretical aspect. It's a new class of functional material in solid state physics. These materials are called Dirac materials. Now the name itself tells you that they don't obey Schrodinger equation, they obey Dirac relativistic equation. That is why these materials are called Dirac materials. The electrons in these materials obey Dirac equations. Therefore these are Dirac materials. Why Dirac materials? Because Dirac materials have certain heavy mass and then the mass changes with respect to the speed of light and this, at any point of time, if it moves with the velocity v, then the mass relationship is m is equal to m0 divided by root of 1 minus v square by c square. It's a famous uh, mass velocity relationship that you come across in physics. So this material exhibits such kind of a property, and therefore people worry about this Dirac, what is uh, Dirac material. my mentors. Now I have several navigators. Navigated to me be here. Navigated me to go to some Jain college. In fact, I was telling this to Sam. I am from a very, uh, I am from a very place which is very closer to MCC. And where you no know, two very well-known professors from MCC lives there, lived there. One is Professor Jay Kumar. Another is uh, Professor Prabhakar and D. Prabhakar. Right, they are very intimately, personally uh, familiar to us, uh, known to my grandfather. He asked him, where should I put him? They said, uh, you put him in AMJN College. So they navigated me to AMJN College. When I went to AMJN College, I finished B.S.C. Physics, but I wanted to do MSc Physics. There, there is no MSc Physics. I have to do Physics somewhere. Then I asked my grandfather, where should I go? Then uh, again, not my grandfather, somebody. Uh, then he said that the, he, they approached, they asked me to talk to Professor D.P. and uh, Professor Jay Kumar. And then no, I, when I spoke to them, they said, you apply here. In the first uh, uh, screening, I didn't get admission. Second screening, I didn't get. Third screening, I didn't get. I think almost classes have started. Uh, Professor Venkatramana star, almost finished Vector Algebra. By the time I got the seat. The person who got seat for me is one, I think one is Professor Francis Soundarajan, right, our Prasanna's father. All right, I approached him, I know all these people because I live this particular area, so I requested him and he helped me to connect with Professor Arthur. 
then professor arthur said yes we have all the credential but i don't know professor kmk will accept you as a student of mcc let me talk to him let me give a talk then he spoke to him and then finally uh, he agreed to take me as ms student of this particular uh, college all right no these are the people who navigated me from here professor balakrishnan navigated me to clra in fact professor balakrishnan did his phd from clra central leather institute where he worked on the viscoelastic uh, properties of collagen fibers and materials and so on so he put me with this uh, phd supervisor for my phd but no that subject i didn't like that much no some people have some liking the reason is i attended the classes of professor kem karunagar the kind of a quantum mechanics the kind of uh, um, uh, enthusiasm that i had I, i created for quantum mechanics cannot be used in that particular area cannot be utilized at all then no i decided to quit that particular project all right took a different topic of research dr t ramasamy i don't know how many of you are know him he is my teacher for he is my phd supervisor he is basically inorganic chemist right so what he worked on some aspects of electron transfer all right i don't know how many of you know about what is electron transfer the electron transfer is a very very important phenomena in physics and chemistry biology materials everywhere wherever you go electron transfer is a very very important phenomena he worked on electron transfer so he said that uh, if you want to continue on abinishio quantum chemistry i can support you but you have to take a problem which are chemistry oriented problem wherein i am comfortable so i chose to be uh, work on quantum mechanics but that area if it is done in physics department it is called to quantum mechanics the same quantum mechanics same syllabus is done in chemistry it is called quantum chemistry that's all that's a difference it's only the nomenclature absolutely there is no any difference between quantum mechanics start in chemistry department and quantum mechanics start in physics and both are al almost 100% is the same therefore i i i, ag I agreed with them i took a chemistry related problem during this process i was navigated to uh, evaluate all these integrals with the help of the gaussian taking gaussian as the wave function all right therefore this led to a development of package called gaussian package today go to any place open any uh, laptop most of the student he will agree with me today we have to advance further we should have uh, some particle physics or even beyond that field theory or even beyond that quantum electrodynamics to Christopherson in University of Kansas for his PhD his work is on electronic such a theory explicitly correlated configuration interaction studies using spherical gaussian to exploratory this is this is a fundamental concept he gave this is the uh, example for lih now within no minutes i will try to do the calculation on lih very very simple quickly i will do the calculations but the fundamentals how do you derive the formula to calculate those interactions are very very important that to not only the uh, regular hartree-fock solution it is the solution of correlated motions of electron even today electron correlation is a very very difficult problem to be solved so he solved that the prescription even even more fundamental prescription was given these are the prescription that he gave how to solve the uh, uh, electron correlation problem and you will see that the gaussian is expressed as, as a, a, a infinite product of some term here another product here as a gaussian physics i think professor karnakar is one such person thing that is this dirac fermi and i'm not going to go beyond this it's already one o'clock all right so the talk about nano 2000 all right they got nobel prize in the year um, both no slow the student they got the nobel prize in the year 2004 why this is important fascinating properties what are the fascinating property it is a 2d material it is light hard um, strong all right Young's modulus is 300 times more than that of steel and it is transparent flexible conducts and uh, you can also get nobel prize all right so this class of material are called the 2d materials 
Similar kind of 2D materials are developed. All right, you have a graphene, you have a HBN, and M0 is action between them. The interaction between them is basically the van der Waal forces, which varies as A r to the power 12 minus B r to the power 6. The induced dipole-dipole interaction is the one which plays an important role in these kinds of materials. Right, these are all different class of material that you can utilize it. If you look at the graphene, le let's do a little bit of solid state physics here. All right, so if it is a metal, there is an overlap between valence band and conduction band. I vi vividly remember one day I came here after my PhD or before my PhD, I came here to see uh, Professor Chandran. He asked me to find what is Fermi. He was about to glow for class. What is Fermi level da? Like that he asked me. So this is a semiconductor and then this is an insulator. And you will see that the gap is greater than this. This, this uh, definition one can change. It varies with one book to another book. But uh, this is the way in which it is given. And if you look at the graphene, very exciting band structure, all right? You will see that uh, at one particular point, the valence band and conduction band, they meet. This particular point is called the critical point. It is called the Dirac point. The any molecule or any material, any solid state material exhibiting this kind of behavior is called a Dirac material. Let me explain further. This, if you look at this in three dimension, it looks like a cone, right? Uh, this is one cone, this is another cone. <coughs> you can call it as an excitation spectrum. If this electron here are excited from here, it will go there, all right? So this is a low energy excitation spectrum. They have a node, they meet at a particular point. This is called a critical point. And this critical point is very, very important. This describes the Dirac material. If you look at the two dimension, it will be like this. Three dimension, it will be like this. But if you look at the else, I can calculate the velocity by, uh, by looking at the slope of this linear dispersion relationship here. By the derivative, if I take the slope of this curve, it will give me the uh, Fermi velocity. It's nothing but the slope. Velocity is proportional to that. If you look at this, in the case of the graphene, the velocity of this material is 8.22 into 10 to the power 5, which is similar to the velocity of the light, which is of the error 3 into 10 to the power 8. Therefore, it, the electrons in this particular material moves with a very high velocity. Right. And how do you understand this? Now, I just give all these are same ball, but the mediums are different. But this hypothetical example to tell you what is meant by massless fermion. All right, I, it is in vacuum, it is in oil, and it is in ground. All these are same kind of a ball, all right, a frictionless ball. I'm giving to, going to give a same kick to all this, and then it travels a large distance in vacuum, less than this, due to viscosity, and slightly larger distance compared to this because of the viscosity or dragging forces, let's see. This kind of a behavior that you call it as a massless, it has a mass, but it travels a larger distance, therefore it call it as a massless fermion, all right? so. Uh, this is one area, then you can, for all the semiconductors that you, uh, we have, you can determine what is the mass of the fermion in this. Now you take this, this is the, uh, in the case of silicon, it is 1.06 times of the mass of the electron, 9.1 into 10 power minus 31. In the case of a graphene, it turns out to be 0 to 0.012. It, the electrons in graphene behaves like a massless fermion. That's a very, very important one. I want you to read. If you ask me, I don't have an answer, but they behave like a massless character, all right? They behave like a massless character. Then, walking through the wall, this is a Klein channeling, all right? And this is a potential step. Professor Karunagaran usually teaches potential step. After teaching that, you all go and see a book called Iring Walter Kimball. There is a book in our library, Iring Walter Kimball Quantum Mechanics, all right? It's the only book in which the potential step is done. No other book. All right, just see that book. Now I have a wall or I have a barrier. Now I want to tunnel through this, all right? According to the Klein paradox, so whatever the particle waves are coming, they will be written back. It's a if you solve the relativistic equation, uh, in the case of a Klein tunneling, you will have one going in this direction, one coming in this direction, reflection, all right? One is with the plus p, another is minus p. But if you analyze more critically, there is a probability for finding this here. This is a conventional tunneling, but Klein tunneling is slightly different. However length, uh, the, the, there is something called Compton length, one over of m, all right? However is the height of this particular tunnel, you will always see a particle here, all right? 
that's called a kind of client tunneling all right so you you look for that uh, th these kinds of material graphene is the first material to probe the client tunneling all right um, i'm not a condensed matter theorist but you can uh, read more about that's a very very important one i have a dog the probability of finding uh, the dog in the, uh, the the space is very high all right uh, this, is the, this is the way in which it is a straight line now i put a barrier all right and this will go yeah so this will go all right but it, it but this dog i make this green very large infinity even then right this dog will claim and will come to this side so this kind of a uh, uh, concept is called claim tunneling graphene ex exhibits that kind of a tunneling and you can solve this quantum mechanically this is with the schrodinger you can use dirac and also solve you can calculate current density you can understand what is reflection and what is uh, transmission all those spectra you can calculate and analyze it always there is a decrease and exponential decrease in the probability this is a conventional tunneling but in the case of uh, uh, klein tunneling it is a entirely different picture you will see that there is a particle there all right so this is that uh, properties exhibited by these kinds of material pulse all right you have a electron scattering and electron impurity scattering electron defect scattering electron boundary scattering electron phonon scattering there are so many uh, concepts one can look at from these all right so they collide with all electron and go to the sink what i'm going to do here is what is dielectric transport what i'm going to do here is uh, what i'm going to do here is i take this length much much smaller than the mean free path here it is very large all right i make the distance as small as possible i quantum uh, mechanically i do a nano confinement the kind of a material that we right you will be telling that c3 c4 c5 rotation is not there all right i think today in some cases c5 rotations are possible i think we should check with the n gautam that is why they removed that and you have a six membered therefore i can replace this all right with the three membered four membered five membered and six membered rings all right i can form a new class of materials right how these new class of materials are formed and you will see when we do the optimization the three membered rings are not stable only this is stable this is stable and this is stable this 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 is a very very interesting material all right i call it as a butterfly graphene you closely look at that i had a very imaginative very very creative student wanker he did this and you closely look at that it looks the the topology of this material is more or less similar to the topology uh, of the the features of the butterfly therefore we called it as a butterfly graphene all right it looks like that all right therefore this called b graphene again we looked at all the parameters whether they are stable or not stable and then this is a four member ring again four member structure is very very beautiful you will see that we have two direct points all right at that time we were not able to articulate much better in the paper all right i, I was very poorly uh, writing those paper right so uh, but today i would have written in different way so this material has two direct points there are not many points having two direct points in the fermi level and the two direct cones they are all very very less later on after talking to some people only we realize that these are all really fascinating dirac materials then if you look at the this uh, this is called a dirac line this is called a dirac nodal plane all right and then uh, <coughs> if you look at that it has a beautiful loop kind of a structure three dimensionally we looked at the electronic structure of this material they form a very very beautiful loop like structure this loop like structure they called as a dirac loop not only point you have a point point to line line to loop all these are very very important class of material this is a dirac nodal loop and then we calculated the what is the fermi velocity of this material which it turns out to be higher right 9.91 into 10 to the power 5 very exciting material all right they, again they form beautiful tubes they form beautiful balls all right they exhibit exact uh, um, band structures and so on. what about this material <coughs> again it is another interesting class of material you will see that they are not exactly a meeting at uh, one particular point on the fermi level slightly above and below slightly above and below it behaves like a p and n doped material automatically it behaves like a p and n doped material it is meeting there all right slightly above the fermi level 
The next case, it is slightly below. They behave like a doped material, self-doped material. Today, development of self-doped material is very important. This is a three-dimensional band structure of these kinds of materials, right? So they also exhibit a, a semiconducting features. It's a semi-metal, right? So in the, uh, I think I stop here in the last um, 45 minutes or so. I introduce you the kind of a work uh, done in MCC on electronic structure theory in the early days, why we were all excited. I was really excited for the kind of a work done by Professor KMK. Later on, I could able to, even today, I could able to much appreciate it uh, because the contributions of SF boys were never noticed. He was not given Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize for the development of, he was talking about, he was talking about the Krishnan, uh, right? And then uh, this happens. Uh, G. N. Ramachandran was another example. All right, so this happens, but SF Boy's contribution was not noticed. Similarly, Professor K. M. Karanagaran's con uh, contribution was not noticed in this particular area. Probably he chose to be in this particular department. He contributed to the growth of the students and community, but not to himself. I chose to concentrate on myself, therefore I could be able to do this, all right, not to the system, all right. Therefore, I, I, was, I, I could be able to do certain things but he chose to co contribute to the department. In fact, I dedicate this lecture to him for all the contribution that he has done to this particular department. And also to me, to, though at a long distance, my, my interactions are at long distance through, K, through RBK or through um, Professor Arthur or through somebody, all right? But uh, I really uh, appreciate his contribution, his knowledge, all right? Which really took me to this particular area. With this, I stop here. I thank all for this wonderful opportunity to talk to you on electronic structure theory and their applications in the area of Dirac materials. My dear students, this is a very, very important class of materials wherein rich physics, concepts of rich physics are very much exploited. Klein tunneling is not easy to understand. Similarly, superfluidity, why suddenly a viscosity drops to zero, it's another important contribution. Why graphene is conducting? the topological ed edges of graphene, why they are conducting, all right? It's called topological insulators. Why they are? Because insulate, topological insulator is a new class of a material wherein inside behaves like a insulator, surface behaves like a conductor, edge states are behaving differently. Therefore, it's a new area in the, in, in the, in the condensed matter physics, kindly orient in that particular direction. You will do wonderful physics from this. I stop here. Thank you once again for the opportunity. I'm really grateful to all. Uh, now the floor is open for uh, discussion. Can I start off? Yeah, yeah, please. I was amazed by the intensity. From the beginning to the end, it was great. Thank you. I think this has been the most appropriate endowment lecture for Professor Sarmadi. Thank you. Three, Professor uh, Sudarshan had gone to Kansas University. And the people there had told him about one person from India who was, he won, he had won the best student award in Kansas University. Oh, oh, oh. And Professor Sudarshan couldn't meet him there, but okay. he said he had heard of Karnagar. Oh, oh, oh. Fourth thing is, I really feel bad that during my professional career that I did not interact with you. Now I, I want to go back as a student and then interact with you and do something more. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It was a wonderful talk. One question about the talk. They now say that graphene is the next disruptive technology. Why do they say that? And what is the fine difference between graphene and graphene? See, basically, the, you will say that the structure is different. Because structure is different, the basic, the bonding is different. Therefore, the properties are different. Two dimensional, you can have a multi-dimensional also. You need not have a one-dimensional. Multi-dimensional is a matter of interest. 
It's a Vanderwall. You call it a graphene Vanderwall. Uh, uh, and uh, graphene? Graphene, A, A, N, E. Uh, all, all these are hydrogen agents. So all three these dimensional. are. No, not three dimensional. You will have a two dimensional plane. All these carbons, CSP2 there, all right, are, will, be, uh, will become CSP3. Will have everywhere hydrogens will come. So it is CSP3 carbons. You, have a, you think that you have a sheet where now no hydrogens. So on bottom and top, you will have a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So that they are called AIM. Sir, I, I've got one comment and one question, sir. Please. Number one is that you particularly uh, shared your uh, inner workings in IIT Madras. Right now, you're working out all the theoretical uh, you know, derivations and all. So that is a great inspiration for all the students as well as for us, that we cannot just uh, get away with uh, the modern developments, but also go to the earlier works, start to rework and enjoy the whole process of analytical sure. derivation. Thank you. And the question, which is a bit, uh, I, I didn't uh, quite understand how this uh, massless fermions can be understood just for the benefit of students. Can it be thought of as mass or an electronic thing being uh, under the influence of some potential that it, it acts as if it is under less mass? Actually, that's a definition, actually. I didn't go into that details. Uh, there are several reviews on this uh, material. You will see here, whatever the result that I am showing you are all from Schrodinger equation, all right? And I am not solving Dirac equation. It's impossible to solve Dirac equation for such kind of a material. I am sure that you know that the uh, Dirac equations are called uh, spinas, all right? That, that vector itself is difficult to solve. But these are all solved in, in solid state uh, band structure using a package. I didn't go into the details called a VASP, V-A-S-P package. That's what. But coming back to his question, that they are all under certain potential, all right? The potential uh, uh, leads to the massless kind of a behavior. Yeah, they are all under certain potential. All have a potential. But Thanks. the, uh, because you know that the uh, Dirac Hamiltonian HD is equal to C alpha dot P plus beta MC square, right? That's the uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, when, when you take m to 0, then now there is a zero gap will arise out of that. In order, since in the case of a graphene, you have a zero gap. In order to explain that, you say that m tends to 0. Or if it is a heavy fermion, then you say m tends to infinity. Then there is a Compton length. Compton length is 1 over of m. Right? When mass is heavy, right? when mass is heavy, 1 over m becomes Infinity. That's why now you could able to see the Klein uh, tunneling, uh, right? But when, when the mass is less, massless, then it is zero, then infinity. Therefore, the, the, the property entirely changes. This is the fascinating aspect of the Dirac materials, all right? This itself looks a lot of understanding, reading, and so on, right? Tamil um, Sona, Nunipul Menj to Poranana, Madu Mari, right? one can do more, more deeper analysis of this particular topic, yeah, right? Calls for, in fact, in the last, that's what I said, my stay at IIT is very productive that I'm able to read a lot of materials on these kinds of things, yeah, right? If, if maybe in another, some other occasion, I will take client channeling itself as an, a topic of uh, lecture, yeah, right? That's, that's the way in which this field is going. Plane paradox, I think we, we do this in, right? Plane, plane got an equation, plane. We, we do that in our MS. Any other question from student side? Pawan Celebrana, Karsila Jona, Umbo Borat Chizan, Nanigara. Thank you. Thank you so much. Teachers are eternal. He can never tell when influence he will stop influencing us. Thank you for influencing each one of us for your wonderful talk on Dirac materials. So may I now invite Dr. Caroline Victoria, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, MCC Alumni Executive Committee member, and correspondence of RSL, MCC RSL School to deliver the word of thanks.
I give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One, for He has enabled us to conduct the 11th KMK Endowment Lecture today. On behalf of the Physics Department, I wish to thank the Physics Alumni Society, PAS, for coming together for creating one first, our first endowment in the name of the illustrious head of the department, the stylish Dr. K. M. Karanagaran. But for this endowment created by his students, we would not be having such thought-provoking, knowledge-enriched lectures for continuous 11 years. Our physics department is truly blessed to have such devoted alumni who are providing all possible support to the present students. Thank you, Physics Alumni Society. Yes, they deserve it. I thank Dr. N. Lakshmi Narayan, who has been the driving force behind the, um, all activities of PAS. Many thanks for your presence, sir. Your presence just illuminates today's event. I would like to thank Dr. Subramanian, whom we affectionately used to address him as Subhu sir, for delivering the endowment lecture. Thanks a lot for introducing new variety of materials. It is actually befitting to have you, sir, as uh, one of the students giving the endowment lecture towards his uh, uh, inspira inspiration. Thanks a million for collecting the works of KMK, sir, and infusing the interest of learning and acquiring knowledge at any cost. Sir, we have seen graphene, 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 all types of allotropes of carbon in a new dimension. Thank you, sir. We have learned many things from you, sir. The subject, of course, but more than that, your simplicity, your warm smile, has made us feel that you are always one among us, although you are somewhere around in the height of achievements in the field of research. It is also because of Sam, sir, as he has very high regards of you, and all that actually makes us to feel that you are us. Thanks for accepting our invitation and for delivering this wonderful lecture, which would go down in the history of our department. I would like to thank Dr. Sam Paul, Secretary of PAS, for the support he gave for the conduct of the program. I would like to thank our principal and Bursa for all the support and encouragement towards every event of our department. I would like to thank and appreciate the participation of our alumni and especially our former head of the department, the ever young Dr. S. Philemon Raj. And And Mrs. Jayalakshmi, in person, as alumni, she had joined us. And other alumni who had joined through our YouTube link. Thank you. I would like to thank the warden of Martin Hall for permitting us to use these premises. I would like to thank the Meston Center for Teaching and Learning for providing us with video and photography, especially Mr. Samuel Satyanathan for helping us to stream this lecture online. I wish to thank our Madhu Canteen for the refreshments. Whenever Subhashni and myself disturb our HOD for discussing the arrangements, Sir took each and every detail as so this is the first lecture he is doing. <laughs> thank you for your guidance, Sir. I wish to thank our ever supportive both teaching and non-teaching faculty of our department for being with us throughout the planning and execution of this event. Everyone pitched at, at the right moment with great enthusiasm. A big thanks are due to the students for always being the backbone of our department. Thanks a lot. I hope this event would have given you a glimpse of the belonging an MCCN would have towards its alma mater, which is very unique and exemplary to MCC alone. Thank you for all the support. Have a wonderful time ahead. Thank you.
we have come to the end of the session. Thank you one and all for your endless support. Thank you.